Welcome to Bound by Books. I am one of your hosts and contemporary and suspense romance writer, Danielle Bannister. I also write under Danny Bannister. I'm joined today by Marianne Moore. And what do you write, Marianne? I write paranormal everything. So paranormal romantic yes, suspense, do. paranormal romance, urban fantasy, paranormal women's fiction, uh, YA paranormal fantasy. If it goes bump in the night, I write about it. So, and I write under Marianne Morea. I write under Marianne Danbury. And I write under M.A. Morea. And dot, 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 to be announced. So, Ooh. yes. Ooh. Ooh. Which is kind of apropos of what we're talking about today, Danielle. Um, yes. Yeah. How do we, with all the <laughs> different pen names that we have and the right? things that we didn't, we write, how do we keep it all straight? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's specifically uh, what we thought we would talk about today and sort of like trying to keep details straight is we thought we sort of like break it down a little bit and we just dive into character, you know, character profiles, character Bibles, you know, there's, there's many different names, but how we sort of catalog our characters and how do we sort of keep track of them within a story, within a series. Um, do we keep yeah. track? Maybe we don't. Um, so, you know, it's it's something that I thought we could bounce across because I know that you and I both, we do have certain uh, practices in place that we use for our characters. So I thought, well, maybe you and I could dive into that uh, particular aspect. But I do have to ask you, how is the weather in the Bahamas? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not in the Bahamas. I wish I was. For those of you who are not watching us uh, right now, Mary's got this beautiful Bahamas background scene uh, in the back of her. And it, it's glorious. And it just, it reminds me of my book, uh, Where You Left Me, because they take a cruise to the Bahamas. And that's exactly sort of the the destination that I would see them at. So <laughs> it, it, it's, it's nice and warm and sunny. It's a virtual not, not filter where we live, but <laughs> that I, I put up specifically because my office is basically a dungeon right. <laughs> and it has no ceiling lights other than this. You this have one. to escape. <laughs> I have this one lamp on my desk, on my desk. That's like, a, you know, it's like one of those, those investigative lamps that they would shine in people's faces. Where are you on the night of? You know, right, so, right, right, right. Anyway, so if you right. notice, it, it look it feels like my hair is kind of moving. Well, you're along. you're you're moving in and out with the wind of the Bahamas. <laughs> it's all very tropical, yeah. baby. I love it. I love it. I'm sorry. I just had to had to play a little bit because I I do really enjoy the the background, and I wish I was there. <laughs> yeah, me too. Because <laughs> it's nice and cold here in Maine. But uh, so yeah, let's 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 talk a little bit about character profiles because I know you have a method and I have a method um and I guess one of the first questions that I that I have for you um how do you come up with your character names just the names of your characters how are you coming up with what you decide to call them do you put a lot of research in it or no. do you pull something out of the hat and go that's the name for me what's your what's your method the name has to resonate um you know, if it, it depends on the character, if it's a vampire and I know that the vampire is, say, for argument's sake, 300 years old, you know, or a thousand years old, I will look at names that were popular at that right. time, historic names. Right. But right. if it's just a regular run of the mill contemporary character, um, they have to they still have to resonate. But I utilize baby name books. Me too. Baby name books I and totally baby name do. sites, you know? Yeah, yeah. Oh, same, same. And I always look for unusual, fun names for my heroes. What and... do they mean? What do the names mean? Does the, yeah. you know, the meaning of the name resonate? Sometimes it does. Sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes you just, a name is like, nope, that's the that's the person's name. And and that's what it is. I wish that I had, that I had started. And this is sort of a a, 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 a thing for, for new writers. If, if you're a new writer, do this and save your sanity, create a spreadsheet or a journal or something with a list of the characters that you use. Because you think you're going to remember the names of your characters so that you won't duplicate them in future books. You won't. You won't. <laughs> it's yeah, go you won't. Right 
the window. You won't remember. I wish I had cataloged. I mean, now I have like over 20 books. I wish I had done that from book one. Have I started it now? No, of course not. Should I have? Yes. Should I start it right this second? Yes, I should. But now it feels like it's just too too much of a daunting task to take that on. Well, that you know, you know what I mean. Speaking like, I of feel daunting like... tasks, <laughs> go ahead. What you can, because I have in the past uh-huh. utilized people. We used to call them street team members back in the day. Uh, now they're need. just they're just your alpha. I readers. need like an avid reader who would just love and gobble up a task like that to look at all yes. the books and just make a, a a little spreadsheet of this character showed up in this book and you know that's I actually, what I need. I actually <laughs> had uh, two readers who were like my one clickers that are part of my reader fan group on Facebook. I don't have too many because you know I, I'm not I'm, I'm starting to kind of phase out of that type of a thing. But back in the day, I asked who wants to, to, to give me like, make like a little Bible and put it in the file section of the group. So anybody who wants to go in and look at the, the characters, their physical descriptions, what makes them tick. And I think, I I think out of my, because I was on the phone, I was had a zoom call with Tina yesterday, one of our our compatriots here who do you, you if you're listening or watching, you guys know Tina Moss. She's our she's our publishing maven. Anyway, we were going over my branding stuff and I have 19 books just in one just in one pen name in one pen name. Yeah. And then that's not counting all the other ones. So, you know, I think out of those 19 books, I think maybe I only got to five of them with this read these readers who were doing it so i am very remiss and 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 not but you know i bet you if i went and asked somebody would do it somebody yeah, would yeah. do it if there's any volunteers yes. listening watching that you know want to go through a catalog and make a little list and really love that kind of stuff and stop you know and you know in in retrospect i do i do make journals for the books that i write and i do have like a section in each of the journals with like the main characters names so really, it wouldn't be that daunting. I would just have to gather all of the notebooks and then do data entry. I just haven't done it. So maybe now that I know that it's not. But still, it's time. All of these things, when you're a writer, take time. So if you're just starting out, this is a task that you want to have as a living breathing document just a simple excel spreadsheet you know name book showed up in you know if you want to add physical descriptions perfect that'll help how old they are if there's any siblings involved if they're a twin you know whatever so that if you go back later you can be like what color eyes did i get them you've got a running little log of that so in one like sort of spreadsheet but other other things that you can do in terms of character stuff, like I know that you you sometimes will use like questionnaires or interview type stuff for your characters, right? But you also have you 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 create something. What what is the process that you do for your your characters? Well, can you hear me over my dog barking? <laughs> I can. Okay. Um, my I think one of my kids came home so that's why they're kind of going bananas <laughs> um i'm sorry can you repeat the question <laughs> i've got dog Dogs, mama brain they i tell you they will they will take over uh i just was curious about what your particular process is when you're creating characters like i know sometimes you do like uh character interviews or profile yes. sheets like what is it that you use when you're starting a new project with a new character how are you sort of logging and capturing character information uh well i have used character interviews for extra judge you know for to, to you know to have special things i can send to readers um i've done it well instead of doing like uh deleted scenes or what have you i've done character interviews you know and i've i have been the interviewer i take on the persona of the interviewer but not as me because they do talk about me in the in the you know as a third party 
you know, Marianne is this, Marianne is that, oh my God, Marianne drives us crazy. You know, oh my God, (laughs) you know, just trying to get that woman's attention to say, hello, I want to say something here. I don't like where this scene is going, you know, and I asked them questions about their relationships with their, with their, uh, with their main character love interest, you know, whether it's the hero or the heroine, you know, and I, and I, I make up little tidbits, little side stories about them. And, and a couple of times I've even had um, them have their love interest, like kind of off screen, like as if they were kind of waiting in the wings, listening to the interview and have them kind of slide their eyes over and wink or something. So it's fun. It's fun to do that. Um, but questionnaires I have used in the past, but it was more of a contest type of a thing where I have asked readers to, you know, if I was creating a character to, all right, um, if you can match what's in my head or do better than what's in my head, tell me what you think they're here, what they look like, what you envision. I've given you the nuts and bolts of the, of, of what I'm doing in the story. What do you see? already what do you see in your head and um i've had so many people respond to that and you know of course you have to offer a prize at the end you know you know but it's usually a signed paperback or you know or naming a character after them you know that type of a thing and that's worked well but it's keeping keeping everything in order like keeping everybody's submissions in order and then cross you know because in a lot of people when they make when they make a suggestion, you may like one thing about something yeah. that they said. So sometimes it can't just be one winner. It has to be a, it's multiple winners because the character ends up being a conglomerate of a lot of people's, you know, a lot of people's ideas. Sure, so. sure, sure, sure. I, I, I will admit that I am a I am a tad more anal. <laughs> surprise, surprise. Um, I you know, for for the, you know, for not having an actual spreadsheet, you know, and I am remiss in that I do make a a worksheet for my main characters, for the, for the main players. I don't do it for all the sub characters, but if they're the the main players, um, and I'll, I'll show this, um, to our viewers on (gasps) screen, um, but I make something that looks like that. Um, and it, it, it basically has for those listening, um, it has obviously there's a space for the character's name, which I'll probably pick out of a baby name book or squ- or I'll, I'll maybe scroll Facebook and I'm looking for names of people. Swear to God, I'll look for, you know, oh, that that sounds good. Um, so there's a place for their name, uh, what sort of job they might have or what mm-hmm. you know profession they might want to be pursuing. Maybe they work at this, you know, as a waitress, but they really want to be a graphic designer or whatever it is. Um what their age is, because I'm not going to remember, uh, what their family is. Do they have brothers and sisters? Are they an only child? Mom and dad alive? Like, what's what's the sort of basic immediate family situation? What's the friend situation? Are they a loner? Do they have a lot of friends? You know, who are the, the players that might come into the story? Um, and because I write romance, what's the romance situation for this character? Are they, you know, the lead? Are they, you know, searching for love? Are they, you know, are they in a relationship? Like what, what is the, the, the relationship status of the person? And then I have a place for like an image so that I'll do like a a Google image search of someone that I think is roughly the right characteristics, not an exact match because they'll change, but you know, I'll get, I'll get hair color, eye color, you know, face features so that I have a rough idea of what they look like. So when I go back to describe them, I yeah. literally flip open my book. I'm like, what did I make them look like? And so I can describe it um, accordingly. So I'll list out the eye, hair, color, what's their build? Are they, you know, big, t- you know, what, what, you know, what's their fashion sense? Are they, you know, a fashionista or are they, you know, jeans and t-shirt kind of any quirks that, you know, you need to know about. Um, and then I go into like, what's the, flaw that this character mm-hmm. has like what yep. what is what is the thing about them that's that's wrong because everybody has something that's wrong with them like what is the the big flaw of this book what is the thing that they're signing you know trying to get over in this particular and then I also do and this is just this is just kind of for fun it's like an exercise to start getting you thinking about a character that maybe you haven't even written yet but it starts to to, to, to spawn ideas um do they have any of the seven deadly sins you know do uh, are they you know 
greedy? Are they envious? You know, uh, maybe they do, maybe they don't. Just something to start pondering. Just um, one. And then <laughs> Just be, one. Could be many. Could be many. You never know. I also do the same thing with a Myers Brig, you know, scale. Are they introverted, extroverted? You know, just to kind of get a sense of who this this person might be. What's their astrological sign? And what's a what's a positive trait of their side and what's a negative trait? Can maybe those things come into play as their characteristic? It just again, just kind of trying to fuel ideas about who this particular person is. And then the last thing that I do is uh what is the false goal of this character? What are they what do they think is gonna make them happy if they get or achieve? What is the thing that they think that's really gonna make them happy versus what is the thing that they really need? What is what is the thing that that that's the real goal? And so when I'm writing a character, I will often I I will have like I say I have a journal beside me and I have you know character pages inside that I'll flip to, and I'll re- reference back up like oh I haven't mentioned anything about you know X Y or Z so I'll go back and 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 do it that way but. It's it's I find that that sort of a uh, a log, even if it's just a picture, even if it's just a picture of the character and their name and age, that's at least something. So yes. that when you're writing it, you can be you can remember sort of what it is you're writing because eventually, when you start writing a lot, your characters are gonna blend together a little bit. They so- do, especially <laughs> if you're like me where I write more than one book at a time, you know, it, that could be you exactly, know, some, you know, exactly. Come to the conclusion that note to self, you will write only care only in, in the tenses that, that match each other. Like I'm like, cause writing in a third person and then writing a first person, oh, that's it the gets worst. That's nuts. The worst. It gets nuts. But I have to tell you, one of the things that, that um, is really interesting about getting, your one clickers involved in, in a help in not doing it for you. Cause I think I, I painted that image before about you know, <laughs> making them do it for me, but it's um, you know, you give them an outline basically for them to kind of fill out, you know, like, like you were saying all right. the, all those parameters that you just listed. I basically list similar ones, not exact, but similar, right. similarly. And I don't give them the answers because I'm really interested in seeing their take because I know what I felt when I created this character. Yeah. All right. I mean, you know, except for the nitty gritty, like, oh, my God, I can't remember what eye color, you know, they had, you know, 12 books down the road. Right. But it's like I want to know what they think about the the inner workings you know what makes my character tick in terms of like we right. were saying the soul of the character you know and uh, not just not just the ticking off boxes and it's right. really interesting to see if they get it if they understand what makes that character tick and not just give you trite superficial things but if they really get into it i mean i had one one gal write almost an entire page on Lily Sabori, who is my, the main character, who is the, the first female heroine in the very first book of the Cursed by Blood series. And I, you know, obviously, she, you know, my character resonated with this, right. you know, with this reader. And I was like, wow. and then later on, I had gone to a, a convention and they were, they were having a, 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 a villains and heroes ball and she came to it dressed as Lily. And that was, That's that was amazing. Awesome. That was That's amazing awesome. to me that she came dressed That's as awesome. Lily. So, but uh, yeah, it, it's, it's a, it's a very helpful tool to do this. It's very yeah. insightful to do it, not just for us, but I think to see how we, how our work actually touches, yeah, how it touches the readers, because it gives you an opportunity to kind of get a glimpse as to you know, what's going on in their head as they're reading yeah. based on their, their, their take, you know, it's, it's a very good point because I, I actually did now that you say that for uh, my series where you left me, I put out a poll to my readers and sort of asked them who they saw as uh, the, the character. I sort of was vacillating between a couple of different people, but really I only had one person in mind when I was writing it, but I was curious if what they saw uh-huh. Like in my mind, it's Sean Mendez. Is that's who oh. my character is? They came back with Sebastian Stan. Now it might be because they know that I love Sebastian Stan, so they I might don't know have who that like, is. 
Oh my god, yes you do. Um, he's been in a million things. Um, he's the Winter Soldier in the Captain America movies. I don't yeah. watch those. I will. I will show you a picture of him, and you will, <laughs> you will be like, "Oh yeah, I know who he is." Um, he's been in a million movies, but anyway. It was it was interesting because I'm like, really? I did not describe in my mind, I did not describe Sebastian Stan at all. In my mind, I was describing Sean Mendes and they're who I know very, who that is. <laughs> very different looking men, in my opinion. I mean, they both have dark hair, but that's about it. Um, and dimples. But you know, that's that <laughs> that's where the that's where it ends. But so I said, you know, because you guys all voted for Sebastian Stan, my next book I will put as my my character inspiration will be a Sebastian Stan sort of character. So it was just interesting to me. Like I had thought I had written so clearly, you know, this and I didn't. So, <laughs> you know, it's funny. I think, it, you know, there's so much age difference between us and some, well, me, not you, me and some of my readers that that kind of a thing would probably date me tremendously like when i was writing blood right. legacy it might be interesting to see who they who they you know picture and be like i don't know who that is but you know well, i mean but... it's like you wouldn't know it to look at him now but my cat my character inspiration for carlos in blood legacy was um antonio banderas and <laughs> you know and but young antonio banderas yeah. not antonio yeah. banderas now right, right, you know right. so like desperado sort yes. of yes yeah. you know zorro yeah. when he was in yeah. zorro yeah. you know yeah so, <laughs> yeah, so, <laughs> but you know, it's funny because Shawn Mendes is a singer, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, and I yeah. only know him because my 17-year-old niece has been a fan for, like, since she was, like, a, t a tweener, so right. that's how yeah. I know who right. he is, but I don't necessarily <laughs> listen to his music, you right. know, because oh, of being- a great singer. He's a great singer. You should. You know, he's great. So, he's great. Gen X, <laughs> you know? <laughs> I stopped yes. I stopped new music in the 90s. I'm to the next. I'm to the next. So. Now. Oh, but I also have a teenage daughter. So I, yeah. you know, I have the 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 link in maybe to the to the uh to the music. I don't know. Maybe not. I don't know. Yeah. Uh anyway, <laughs> completely <laughs> sidetracked there. <laughs> some other sort of helpful tools um maybe that an author might use to keep characters straight i'm thinking maybe like family trees uh you know designing family trees might be sort of a helpful way to to you know figure out i use i use flow charts yeah, yeah to, to, to figure out you know, who's related to who and mm -hmm. you know who has there's a million siblings it's you know especially if you're doing a series with there's family involved like if you're doing a brother or series or something like that that a family tree becomes very important to make sure that you you know who's married to who who's still single who who can you know i still write a book about who hasn't been you know that sort of um thing what about uh pinterest boards do you use pinterest boards for like sort of inspiration for either locations or characters or i have some style i have some i i i not tremendously no um i have a huge whiteboard that's next to my desk in the dungeon. And um, I, I do my flow chart, you know, of, you know, per story, you know. Um, do you like take a picture of that before you wipe it clean for the next book? Or is it, is it just uh, once it's done, I don't care about it and we erase it? And no, I, I, I copy it into a notebook and I just, you know, and I have a notebook that's particular to that, to that one story. I, I, I can't just have digital information yeah. over the course of the last two years i've had too many situations happen with computers sure. dying and sure. having backups not exactly work 100 percent, and then i yeah. cry so i still <laughs> so I, it's not I, a bad idea to have a paper backup and a digital backup yeah. there's nothing, we put way too much work into this stuff to yeah. have it suddenly just yeah there's nothing computer. pretty about a 50 something year old woman sobbing in Best Buy because they're telling her that they cannot retrieve anything off of her hard drive and that her backup disc has lost the last three months of her work. Oh, so, yeah, I remember yeah. that when that happened to you. That yeah. was, uh, that yeah. was awful. So notebooks, um, notebooks serve notebooks their purpose for me because each, each book, I mean, I will have like perfect example. I just finished Leap of Faith. Okay, and it's now at the editor and gonna and it's slotted to be released in you know via webtoons and yonder um in May. I have two notebooks that are filled with things that I wrote um longhand when I was kind of in a place where I couldn't open my laptop, but yep. I but I still had 
stories yeah. that I need to, to need to write. In there is our pages. Each character has a page in the back of the notebook with their description and their you know their powers and you know yeah. who, how are they related? Their, yeah, that's their a physical whole other thing for like paranormal is like yes. what is their superpower and what right. is their you know weakness and yeah, all what their element to... is, what yeah. what uh, what what star rules them, you know, and 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 that type of a thing. Um, what their what their gemstone is. Um, and it, you know all of these things kind of also I need because there's going hopefully there's going to be a book too that I'm going to have to go back and reference this, you know. And, right. Right. The other thing is I've, you know, because it's a fantasy, I had to draw a map of the world I created. So that's in there as well. Yep. You know, yep. a rough yep. sketch of, the, of, a, of a map that could possibly, if this ever does become a, a, yeah. a paperback, right, you know, a, a, it will go in, in the front right. or the back of that. So, right. you know, it's, um, you know, it's best to have all of everything that you need in one place, at least as far yeah. as I am concerned. No, no, I, I, I absolutely agree with you. Um, I I will I, mean, I don't write fantasy so but but in terms of like maps and stuff I will draw like floor plans for the spaces that people are in so I'm like you know where is the bathroom where is you know if I say you know that they're walking through the master bedroom to the bathroom is there a bathroom there or do I have them walking to a bathroom over here like I it, it helps me sort of visualize mm -hmm. I am no drawer so you should see some of my sketches they're pretty horrific they're not to scale but at least it gives me like a, a place in my mind that I can sort of travel but I'll also sometimes look at floor plans online and try to like oh yeah that kind of, I like the way that looks and so I'll print the floor plan and I'll slap that in my you know book so that I know yes that's yeah in my little notebook little things like that you know uh, pictures of of locations like for I, I hate to keep bringing up the series but the where you left me series the Bahamas was a, a big thing. And I had taken, I had, I had gone on a cruise to the Bahamas myself. So I went back through all my photo albums and I went through and like all of gathered all of sort of the pictures that I had taken of the Bahamas so that I could help remember like, what did the ship look like? What did the, you know, I don't remember what it was a while ago. And so I slapped all of those in there too. So, you know, all of that stuff can come back and can help you catalog because especially if you're writing a series of books and that these characters are going to come back more than once it's really important that you right. put this information somewhere so that when you go back you know what you're talking about so you don't have to necessarily reread the book well i still do but right. you know you won't you don't have to Me like too. reinvent the wheel as much because you're like oh yeah this is what you know i'll also do i'll also do for for like time i'll print out calendars of the the time and the year that we're set in so i can sort of keep track of like okay this chapter is happening roughly this week this chapter is you know just so that in time and space i'm i'm also paying attention because i have a really hard time with that personally Temporally, of knowing yes. where i am in when i'm writing and be like i've lost time where am i i've said yeah. it's morning but the the chapter before it was you know, we, we were already in morning. So how can we be waking up when the last chapter was morning? So I have a hard time with that. So I try really hard in my outlines now to know what time of day is it? <laughs> what day of the week? Because I, I just can't remember. I can't remember anymore. <laughs> well, I mean, it's true. I mean, because like a book that I wrote where um, my main character ended up, you know, preggers, you know, and I had to look back and see how, how far sex, along you know, because yeah, when did yeah. they when did when were they together exactly. and you know is she exactly. just or you know that type of a thing where were they oh I can't say this happened you know that she's eight weeks along if they've only known each other for four right. weeks right. you know that type of a thing because then it's like okay who's the daddy yes. right 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 <laughs> and 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 uh what of my my young adult books uh what moons do it, it was all about sort of the the, the lunar cycle sort of plays pretty pro prominently in the story i was having moons come up and go down but i wasn't following any sort of lunar calendar until a reader pointed it out I'm like oh crap so i had to go back and sort of rework in my you know the beta phase i'm like i have not been paying attention to that so i had to go back and you know fix all of those moon references because you yeah. know a full moon might be pretty but if you haven't written it to be plausible it makes no sense. So. Well, I mean, uh, uh, temporal issues are a big deal. You know, you have yeah. to make sure that your characters can't just be in one place when they've been in, a, in another. Same thing when you're writing intimate scenes or action scenes. You have to know where all the hands and legs, <laughs> arms, arms, all arms the and legs and hands and <laughs> feet and mouths are. are. <laughs> are. 
<laughs> you have to. You have to know yeah. where everything is. Yeah. And or they, if they're sitting or standing, you know, just a second ago they were standing, but now they're sitting all of a sudden. Like we don't see that happen, but you know, it it's hard. But you know, this is what beta readers are for. This is what editors are for. They kind of sort of help you with that, but. The more that you can do to, to sort of be aware when you're sitting down to write, the, the easier everybody's life will be if you can catch these things before they get to later drafts. But sometimes it can't be helped. <laughs> you're just a moron and you write bad stuff. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think this is this is a more of a bane of existence for people who are more pantsers than than plotters. Plotters have it in their 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 uh, capacity to write everything down as part of their outline. So at least they've got a, a, a you know, a, a, a visual, whether it's a, a digital visual or, or a notebook or something. But when it comes to um, <laughs> people who are, people who are pansters will suffer more because yeah. they don't always write stuff down. It's just kind of stream of consciousness. Right. Whereas a plotter will, will, have an outline and we'll have all of these things inherently in the outline. And then we'll also, because of just the way they're wired, they would actually write, write everything down that they would need to, to keep track of everything. So, you would think. Uh, well, <laughs> but we know. forget that too, but yeah, no. Yeah. It's it, an outline does will, will help if you remember to do it. <laughs> so anyway, I mean, I'm just looking at my board now that is from Leap of Fay that probably needs to be taken care of. Um, but when I started the board, I had one, two, three, four names and one location on here. And then I added one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten more names to the board because then it, the, as the story evolved, sure, as I was you know, outlining chapter after chapter, more characters came into play. So, right, right. and secondary characters and tertiary characters are just as important. I'm not saying you have to have every sure. server or, you know, guy right. who pumped gas, you know, listed, but it, even if they're tertiary characters that could become secondary characters in, in the following book, and then maybe primary characters in the, in a third book, you need to know who they are and you need to know their deets right. as well. Right. Cause you'd never know that tiny little character might end up with a much bigger part in another book. You never know, you know, so it's you keep a window open just always keep a window open you never you never know where where stories are going to involve um i think we have time for sort of one last question um Shoot. what would you suggest is like the bare minimum that an author should do in terms of sort of keeping track of their characters like what is the one thing if, if they're going to do nothing else what is the one thing that you would suggest that they do oh, when God. starting their book in terms of characters, like what, what should they be noting if you were to give one gem? Other than, you know, name, rank, and serial number. I mean, uh, <laughs> yeah. you know, that type of a thing. Um, I think the, mo what, for me, the most important thing that they need to keep it, they keep in, in mind is um, how they meet, why they meet, and what's going to keep them apart. Because when we're writing romance, yeah, those the, those are the the, the 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 questions that most people would ask: who, what, when, why, and how. You know, that's the most yeah. important. Those are the most well. I wouldn't say most important because those need to be fleshed out. But at the bare minimum, those are the questions you need to ask: who, what, when, why, and how, and where. Yeah. Who, what, when? Yeah. Who, what, when, where, and how, and why? Yeah, six. Yeah. Uh, I'll, I'll, well, along those those same lines i think for me it, it's that you know what does the character want versus what do they need because at the end of the day that need is going to be the theme of your book you know they, they, they need to feel you know loved worthy uh you know whatever it is that that what they need is the theme of your book mm -hmm. and that that will run through the entire book is that theme so you know f trying to figure out that those goals and you know how they fail at, or how they succeed at trying to get to those goals is the book yep. right so yeah it's important to know what those are sort of going in yeah. um which goes seam goes yeah. seamlessly with the why and the what yeah 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 you, you know, know in addition to sort of what they look like in that kind of stuff i think that's that's peripheral to, that's yeah. important to sort of have in the back burner but the core of the character i think comes down to, to yeah. those those little meteor bits that you know you can't 
see physically but resonates on the page um so but i think that does it for us today in terms of character profiles some some basic how to's yeah and basics not only just how to's but shoulds you know otherwise you make yourself crazy and you know what writing is a hard enough craft why make it harder on yourself write that really shit is. you know write your stuff down that's right. write it down yeah, yeah. And it'll yeah. keep you, it'll, and I don't mean I'm post-it notes all over the place because been there, done that, guilty as sin, you know? And does it, go, then six months later, you're like, what is this? Oh my God, what does this pertain to? I don't know. Oh, that's good. Oh, I used it already. You know, that type of a thing. So organize yourself, organize yourself. Set yourself and, up for success. Yes, yes, because it's hard enough to come by. So don't don't stack the odds against yourself. Stack yeah. the odds in your own favor. So Anyway, um, thanks for joining us tonight. And um, I think that's we've covered as much as we can. And, you know, see us again next Monday. Same bat channel, same bat time at boundbybookspodcast.com. So bye-bye. Bye. Wait, before you go, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And check us out on our website, boundbybookspodcast.com.